Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ray Almgren. All your rockets in the house tonight. Woo! Everybody just have a good time. Yeah. And we gon' make you lose your mind. Everybody just have a good time. After Shelly's keynote yesterday, I had to change my music. Uh, so uh, welcome to day three on behalf of everyone uh, at NI. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, we're really having a great time. Now, <clears throat> we're talking a lot about smartphones, so why don't everybody get their smartphone out? Now, I got a uh, project for you. So if you'll go to your calendar application, because I know you all have one, and uh, just go ahead and launch the calendar, and you'll want to go new. It's an all-day event, all-day new entry, and go to August 2012. You want to put in August 6th is the start date, and August 9th, end, and hit uh, done or save, depending on your OS. And uh, it should, should look something like this, if uh, you get it right. Yeah. OK, you got that? By the way, this is a very, very smart phone. <clears throat> so uh, this week, Dr. T and Eric, Shelley, Jeff K just did, I think, a phenomenal job of really showing and capturing what our mission is uh, at National Instruments, and that is to equip the scientists and engineers with the tools that accelerate productivity, innovation, and discovery. The demos were just truly phenomenal, and listening to you and getting feedback is a very important part of that. Now, as many of you know who've been here before, today we narrow the focus on that a bit, and we focus it all on accelerating student innovation. And this morning we're going to see a number of demos that really highlight that. So I've got an image for you. Think about what, what might this represent? So all the double E's thinking it's ground reference, right? Uh, those of you that read your program and know who our keynote speaker is are thinking this, uh, maybe it's a tornado. But, you know, perhaps maybe it's, uh, it's an idea. It's a student idea that when it's placed in the right context, in a relevant setting, and surrounded by the right tools, it can turn into a real innovation, just like the innovation in Edison's lab. So we've talked a lot about graphical system design and the modern elements of engineering. And these same elements are the same ones that we believe are critically important that the students have in their laboratories so that they can truly innovate. Some modular uh, reconfigurable hardware and software that's very productive are the tools that they need. Now, it turns out that it's harder than you might think to get those tools exposed to the students in the labs. Uh, too often, in the engineering schools, the students are bombarded in their first few years with just a heavy dose of mathematics and simulation, and they never really get to do engineering. You know, they signed up to go to engineering school, but sometimes get sold a bill of goods, and after two years think they're only going to be a mathematician. Um, you know, in 1987, it was the highest number of engineering graduates that graduated from schools in, in the United States. And, it's declined uh, steadily since then. It's somewhat leveled out. An interesting ha thing happened. That, by the way, is the year I graduated uh, with my uh, electrical engineering degree. That was about the time the computer started to show up in the uh, educational setting. And believe me, the computer has done a wonderful thing so, right, for, for our industry and for many industries. But one of the bad things that happened at that time was that there was way too much reliance then on using the computer just for simulations and just for mathematical analysis. And it occurs to me that as that trend happened and more and more students only got exposed to the math and simulation, they got less interested in engineering. And perhaps that's why we have less students that are as excited about engineering as they used to. You know, another interesting report came from the National Academies, the same group that uh, published the 14 Grand Challenges. They had a publication called Changing the Conversation. And in it, they explicitly stated if you want students to pursue careers in engineering, don't tell them they have to be great mathematicians. Instead, you need to talk to them the same way Shelley talked yesterday about solving the grand engineering challenges, making a difference in the world, and changing the world. 
So this morning, we're going to attempt to show you that with students that are literally changing the world with their projects. So one of the things we do at National Instruments is we run a student design competition. This is a worldwide competition. It's actually run locally by each of the operations in each of the countries. So they run their competition, and then the finalists from those are all submitted to our worldwide competition. Panel of judges that includes professors look over them, and as you can tell, we have entries from all over the world, 19 different countries, and a total of 100 entries. Uh, the applications were just like the engineering grand challenges in so many different areas. Uh, they're really amazing. Uh, if you get a chance to look through them, we, we post them on the website. But we've narrowed them down to four, our four finalists. Uh, and they're in, in different areas. And some deal with low cost, some deal with uh, uh, measurements and visualization. And so what we wanted to do this morning was just give you a little insight uh, into these uh, finalists. Uh, the first one is a trumpet auto-tune system from a student team in UC San Diego. This is actually a closed-loop control system where uh, the, the microphone takes the uh, sound from the trumpet, uh, put it into an amplifier, digitized by the MIDAC, and then a control signal is then sent out through an Arduino controller that literally moves the trumpet in and out to tune it. And the quality is, of this is pretty good. They can tune it within five cents. And those of you who are musicians know that there are 100 cents between each note uh, on the scale, so it's rather precise. They use LabVIEW to de develop a PID algorithm and ultimately create that system. That's uh, one of the best we had in the low-cost category in the sense they used uh, MIDAC and about uh, $20 of parts uh, to pull that all together. So uh, that was a very uh, exciting application. Uh, another one is from uh, the UK, Leeds. This is a very interesting uh, student project. It's a haptics system. So in this uh, application, the students integrated a force feedback sensor uh, into uh, the computer, it programmed it with LabVIEW, and were able then to take the information from the force feedback sensor into the uh, 3D uh, picture control toolkit in LabVIEW and, and then show uh, where the, the sensor is being uh, moved around. Now, they also created a, si a simulation of a liver that would have cancer in it. So they got a soft gelatin uh, material, injected some hard objects in it. Then they automated an XY plotter uh, from LabVIEW and uh, Compact DAC, and then can go in and search into the, the material and find the tumor, and then are able then to plot that on the screen that would show exactly where the location of the tumor is. So next up is to merge those two systems together and have a full telemedicine operation that hopefully will lead to better advances in medicine. Our last uh, finalist that we're going to talk about is the uh, Pitch Pals from Team Strikeout. They're located here in Texas from Rice University. And uh, we've got a video that will talk about what they've done. The ball is called Pitch Pals. It's a pitch pressure analysis and logging system. Grip is the most important part in determining whether or not a baseball pitch is successful or not. Video can only show you so much. Um, a, lot of time, a lot of times the hand is hidden from the view of the camera and it's turned around. And even if you could get the whole picture, you don't know how much force the pitcher's fingers are applying on the ball. The only way to get the comprehensive uh, a comprehensive picture of how the pitcher is holding the ball is by instrumenting the baseball with four sensors. And we have the top and bottom board, which are essentially the same, that connect the sensors from the outside of the ball. And then the main board, the middle board, is our main board that has the processor and all of the um, intense logic on it. What our system does is that it uh, presents this data in a 3D color map. So it just shows you very visually exactly what is going on, uh, where the important uh, force points are and how all of that changes over time. Right now it weighs and it uh, weighs the same as a real baseball and it's dim the dimensions are the same. The only thing is that we don't have the feel of the seams around the baseball and that's just a matter of um, sewing, the, sewing the cover back, the, the leather skin back on. So uh, very exciting application. Uh, that uh, team 
uh, used a, a number of uh, National Instruments tools. They used our multi-SIM and ultiboard tools to lay out uh, the embedded system and LabVIEW and our Diadem product to do uh, analysis of the data. Uh, you can see the design of the embedded system there. There are a number of components from Texas Instruments that are embedded in that, good friends of ours here in Texas, and they do great work with the uh, universities as well.